Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host, Veronova, and today I'm going to be covering digital audio and how it works. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the very basics, and in the next video, I'm going to cover some more of the advanced principles of digital audio. So, you're all familiar with a waveform, hopefully, but how do we go from a sound wave, such as a sine wave, to a digital recording which displays a sine wave? Well, this is done through sampling. And when I say sampling, I'm not referring to taking sections of audio from other people's music and using them in your own, but instead taking regular measurements of the waveform throughout its cycle. So when a sound is converted to digital audio, regular measurements are taken of the waveform's amplitude over time. The number of measurements taken per second is known as the sampling rate, and typically this is 44,100 times per second, and is represented in hertz, which is a scientific term meaning cycles per second. 44,100 samples or measurements per second is 44.1 kilohertz audio. There are also plenty of other sampling rates available depending on your hardware and software setup, but 44.1 kilohertz audio is the most common and is used on pretty much every consumer format such as CD, MP3, AAC and FLAC audio. So that's how the sound wave amplitude is stored over time. But how do we represent the amplitudes of each analog sample digitally? Each sample is stored as digital data, which means it's stored as a binary value, and the number of variations in a single binary value, or bit, is 2. A bit can be either 0 or 1. Obviously a sound wave is not either 0 or 1, so typically 16 bits are used to store each sample's amplitude to give a greater resolution between these two points. This is known as bit depth, and 24 and 32 bit bit depths are also used in professional audio to give extra resolution to maintain quality through the production process, but 16 bit is the consumer standard. Something useful to know is the actual resolution that 16, 24 or 32 bit audio provides, and you can work this out using some fairly simple maths, just by knowing the bit depth. Two possible binary values per bit to the power of the number of bits per sample will give you the resolution available for the amplitude of the audio. So 16 bit audio would be 2 to the power of 16, which is 65,536 possible amplitudes. And 24 bit would be 2 to the power of 24, which is a big number. In case you don't fully understand this yet, I'm going to go back to an analogy I used in the Preparing for Mastering video. With 44.1 kHz 16 bit audio, we have a time resolution, 44.1 kHz, and an amplitude resolution of 65,536 values. So just apply this to a digital image, which has a horizontal and vertical axis, each with their own resolution in pixels. Time resolution is the horizontal axis, and amplitude resolution is the vertical axis. And in fact, if you zoom in on a waveform in Audacity, or any audio editor, you can see all the sampling points as an image in the vertical and horizontal axes. So now we have a set of sample points, and if you connect them up, you get a waveform vaguely like the original, but really blocky, and it would sound horribly distorted if you actually heard it. So how do we convert these sample points back into a natural sounding audio file? This is done using interpolation. Interpolation is an algorithm which joins the dots smoothly, imitating a real sound wave's behaviour. This may all seem rather basic and crude, but scientifically these methods allow you to sample a waveform digitally and then recalculate the original waveform almost exactly as it was. So thanks for watching, I hope this tutorial has helped. As always, if you have any requests for future tutorials, then you can head over to our Facebook page and leave a comment suggesting them. And please like, comment and subscribe. See you next time.